someone said in the beginning of the show, hey, I guess, you know, why are you so obsessed or, you know, such a big you know fan of detractor content around DSP? And I mentioned how I like watching people who are insanely um, unlikable not realize why they're unlikable because I spent a lot of my time growing up uh, being a bit of a people pleaser, wanting people to like me. And these guys don't want, they don't care if people like them or not. They just do what they do and they basically don't make any effort to change the bits about them that people don't like zero and actually they're actually surprised and don't understand why people don't like them it doesn't make sense so they just kind of dismiss them by calling them trolls or detractors off so i love that the other part about i love when it comes to dsp and brendan who i think are very similar because i think low because i think you described brendan as a low cow for definitely especially the amount of content he's been able to generate in the whole you know, there's a whole flipping um subculture around him and shit you know me can me included with my live streams but the other thing i like about the guy is a delusion and the lack of self-awareness i flipping love it because again i don't have that and i wish i did because i honestly do think as i said on previous shows that it's one of the secret ingredients of becoming successful on social media or as a content creator overall is to have a sense of delusion because you have to be deluded enough to think that people actually want to hear and listen to you do a vlog or do a podcast or whatever it may be considering the amount of options that exist out there you have to be delusional to think to think that you are um, worthy enough of people's attention to get subs to get donations to get likes to get fucking social media follows and all that malarkey and sponsorships and every time because there's plenty of people out there doing content many people that are more funny than you more charming than you more charismatic hotter whatever maybe they exist but for you to be the one doing it like i am every single day or whatever you need to do it you have to be delusional and he brendan has it in heaps so this is brendan talking about you know joe rogan leaving la and moving to texas and how he was going to move but then he saw a gap in the market and he wanted to take it and this is the kind of you know delusion that runs through his head which he actually believes which is absolutely ridiculous and quite inspiring to be honest because i think we all need um some equal servings of delusion in our lives to make us successful also then rogue moved to austin so it shook up the whole podcast comedy scene in la I was looking at property in Austin, and I was like, man, it just doesn't feel like the move for me. Like, you gotta remember, Joe's been in LA 30 years before he left. Tom Segura's been in LA 30 years. Like, they got their start here, made their name here, and then dipped out. I got a lot of work to do. So I was like, man, there's kind of a void here in LA. I'm gonna stay here, man. So I'm staying here, I think it's the right choice. You know, I'm getting more spots than ever around town, and you know, I'm just doing my- I find it hilarious how he legitimately thinks there's any overlap, or oh, this is my point of delusion. I think it's delusional to think there's any overlap between Tom Segura fans, Joe Rogan fans, and Brendan Shaw fans. Except for the fact that they maybe used to be on the same podcast together or they used to run around in the same group together. I find it utterly delusional that he legitimately thinks Tom Segura fans would want to watch him do stand-up or Joe Rogan fans would want to watch him do stand-up. It doesn't make any sense. There's no correlation. So there's, there's no overlap in their fan base at all. The only correlation they have is obviously the podcast and Joe and stuff and the comedy store. But there's nothing that I think that those fans of Tom or Joe could find funny in his content. I don't think so personally. But maybe I'm, I'm in the wrong. My thing, but when it, going back to the fight companion, um, it was my favorite show to do. I called Joe. I'm like, man, you know the number one thing I miss? Because everyone's on their own now. When Joe left, it was like Game of Thrones. It was like he was the head dude. You, you, you know, for you know what's funny? It was Game of Thrones, and he benefited a lot from it. He used to go to the comedy store and perform out there. But now it's ever since Rogan's left. From what I've been hearing, people who live there and people who know the scene, he hasn't stepped back foot in there again. Or maybe he's done a couple bringer shows or a couple, sorry, guest shows here and there. But the frequency of him being in there before has definitely slowed down to the point where it just doesn't, it's not really a thing you even hear him mention. He doesn't even talk about the comedy store as much as he did before. Now it's all Laugh Actually, Laugh Actually, Laugh Actually. But before, it was all about the comedy store he was enamored of it it felt like he was wanting to angle to get past there which is absolutely insane but you don't ever hear him mention the comedy store ever again and that is because rogan left rogan it was a big reason why he was able to perform so often there because he'd bring him on his shows better or worse like he made it like a positive environment he upped everybody built everybody up there wasn't like this bickering going on because there was a king straight yeah. up there's a king Clear leadership. And he was a, yeah, the leadership, and he's doing it at a high level, and that's how you guys should act. 
He leaves, and it's like Game of Thrones. The king died. Your reign is over. <laughs> and now it's like, wow, 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 everyone's out for themselves. And you're like, holy shit, what happened to the crew? All my crew moved. Deal moved. Yeah, but he's also including the fact that he tried to fuck one of his crew members' girlfriend behind his back, tried to get another girl to come to his truck and suck his dick, and that may be what's led to him being ostracized, not the fact that Rogan left. That's what he's not really mentioning. Moved, Segura moved, Joey Diaz moved, uh, you know, everyone just, dis you know, Tim Dillon, everyone dipped out. But yeah, I find it incredible, man. That delusion is absolutely incredible to think that Tom Segura fans or Joe Rogan fans would want to come and watch him do comedy. It just doesn't make any sense. Just watch five minutes, especially of Tom Segura's content or his comedy, at least his delivery, um, the jokes that they have on their fucking podcast, your mum's house, and you'd see there's no correlation between them. If anything, you know, th his fans will be calling Brendan a cool guy. Do you know what I mean? He's not their kind of person in terms of comedy wise. It doesn't make any sense in that regard, but. I think we all need um we all need that flipping uh we all need that sense of delusion to keep ourselves going.